Next on AutoCast, we have your first look at the new models for 2012, including the newly restyled best-selling car in America. Are you ready for cars that talk to each other? We talk to Ford engineers. Wait till you hear what they say about human drivers. Do you know the difference between a classic and an antique car? Mill Man schools our crew. Get ready for the lesson. Plus, are you dreaming of an exotic car? So are we. We've got a close-up look at one of the newest rides in town. It's time to fasten your seatbelts. Now, this is AutoCast from the 41st Annual South Florida International Auto Show. Good evening, everyone. I'm Jose Suarez. The show is open. Very, very exciting night for us. We're not going to waste any time. We're going to go ahead and go straight to what's new on the show floor this year. Let's start things off at the Fiat display. Last year, they were concept cars, but this year, they've hit the streets. The 500 is hot right now and even has Miss J-Lo dancing in the streets. VW has lots to buzz about with the introduction of the new Beetle and the new American-built Passat. This car was made famous by mini Darth Vader. Sadly, he's nowhere to be seen. A newly restyled Civic hit the streets earlier this year and comes in two or four doors, also available in lots of trim levels. Make sure you come on down and try one on for size. Mercedes-Benz has two big intros to show off. First up, their popular SUV, the ML, gets a makeover. The C-Class loses two doors. Check out the sexy new C-Class Coupe. Two more luxury models for you. The highly anticipated Lexus GS gets the new corporate face and styling treatment, not to mention more techno goodies than ever before. And Audi also getting into the act by restyling a favorite in their lineup. Meet the all-new A6. So while there are hundreds of cars on the show floor, only one has the distinction of being the best-selling car in America. That's the Toyota Camry. I was recently invited to the South Florida debut. Take a look. This car has big shoes to fill. The new Camry has to live up to every car to ever wear the Camry badge. So how is it hoping to do this? The suspension has been really refined. Uh, the steering has been tightened. Uh, it's a, a much tauter, much more uh, athletic vehicle. Toyota paid attention to every angle and panel. In fact, check out these little fins, barely noticeable, right? Well, they serve a very big purpose. They actually help reduce drag and even cut wind noise around the windows. While the outside has been updated, don't think that they ignored the interior for a minute. Every surface has been upgraded. Materials are soft to the touch and feel like they belong in a car costing thousands more. All your senses are in for a treat as well in the all-new Camry with the introduction of their new integrated entertainment system called Entune. Take a look at this. It even uses apps from your smartphone right on the car's navigation screen. By pairing the smartphone to your radio control head, your radio control head now is able to control the apps on your smartphone. Under the hood, you can opt for a four-cylinder, now with more power, or a V6. And it's even available as a hybrid as well. Prices start at just under $22,000 and go up from there depending on trim and engine choices. There's no base class, it's, it's quality class all the way through. Hey, and don't miss out on your opportunity to actually drive one of these cars at the auto show. Here are the details you need to know. The Toyota Ride and Drive event starts Thursday, November 3rd, outside of the main entrance. Thursday and Friday, you can drive the cars from 2 to 10 p.m. Saturday and Sunday, 11 a.m. to 7 p.m. Get more information at the Auto Show website, sfiautoshow.com. Make sure you tweet while you're here. Use the hashtag SFAuto. Let's head over to Roxanne Vargas to introduce you to the official car of the show. Hey, Rox. Hey, Jose, it is all business as soon as you walk into the 41st Annual South Florida International Auto Show. The first vehicle you will see is the Mustang Boss, baby. It is all business and back on the road. We're joined today by Lombardo Perez, head of Metro Ford and the chairman of the 41st Auto Show. Lombardo, welcome. Thank you. It's good to be here. It's good to be here, and it's good to see the Boss back on the road. Since 1969, that's the last time we saw it on the road, right? Yeah, the heritage behind the Mustang in general is amazing, but the Boss has its own story, and this year's Mustang is unbelievable. This Boss has got 440 horsepower power, aluminum engine, and it's ready to go. It's the closest thing you'll find on the road that is street legal, the closest thing to a race car. It's just an amazing vehicle. Jeez, I could call it Boss Roxy. It sounds like it was a car <laughs> made for me and it's a car made for you. Um, and, and Ford, what a traditional brand. It's an American brand. And you, we were talking earlier, Lombardo, about the customers and the clients that come to you and say, thank you for being an American car, not taking that package deal. Talk to me about that. Yeah, it's, it's really a 
a point of pride to all Ford dealers and, and really all Americans. It's, it's a great story that Ford's had over the last couple, three years. Their turnaround's been absolutely amazing. And I, every single day, a customer would walk in the showroom and say, I'm just here because I really appreciate what you guys have done. You did it the right way, and we appreciate what you guys do here for us as a community in the community, but also what you do represent as an American uh, brand. American brand. All right, Lombardo Press, thank you so much for your time. An American brand, something for everyone out there. All right, much more coming your way. Stay with us. Coming up on Autocast, we're living green with meteorologist John Morales as he introduces us to his electrifying new ride. Roxanne takes you for a ride in Camp Jeep. She'll also have details on how you can get behind the wheel of one of these trucks. And Jose gets a lesson in antique cars. Seems Mr. Autocast doesn't know it all. That and more when Autocast from the 41st Annual South Florida International Auto Show continues. You're watching AutoCast with Jose Suarez and Roxanne Vargas. Hey, welcome back, everyone. Well, Ford is working on some pretty cool stuff. Let me tell you about it. In an accident, seconds count. But what if your car could predict when you're about to get into trouble? Well, Ford is working on that system, and they're hoping to save lives. We headed out to Sun Life Stadium for a full demonstration of the new system with this all-new Ford Explorer and these Fiestas, putting these cars in several real scenarios. Here's a little bit more on how the system works. It's using wireless communication, the kind of wireless that you might use in your laptop or your smartphone, and bringing it to the automobile world. Like, here's my position, here's my speed, here's my acceleration, here's where I've been, here's where I'm going. So now it's time to put it to the test. We positioned our autocast cameras to capture every single angle. Let's imagine, if you will, we got the green light at the intersection, and let's say this guy, he's going to blow through the red light, and he's drunk, or he's not paying attention, and he just, you know, uh, he runs through the intersection, and we're going to get the warning. Well, that's amazing. Right. And you have seconds to react. Right. So here are two important final questions. First up, will this technology be exclusive to Ford? We've had a lot of luck, you know, working with other car makers since 2002 on this technology and also working with the United States Department of Transportation. And second, will the system eventually replace human drivers? If you have a car driving itself, it's got to be able to first know what's going on around it and then make decisions. And humans are really good at making decisions in complicated situations. Cars need needs a lot more work on artificial intelligence to get to that level. So you're going to actually be able to come to the South Florida International Auto Show and see some of that technology in action. But one of my favorite pieces of technology is this guy, Hank. What's up, Jose? What's up, buddy? Hello, NBC Channel 6. Are you happy to be here in South Florida? I am very happy to be here. One of my favorite places to be here, the 2011 South Florida International Auto Show. Are, are you hoping to do a lot of stuff while you're in town? Are you hoping to get out and, and see, see the town? Well, Jose, one thing, my feet are bolted to the floor, man. You know what I'm saying? I know. It's unfortunate. Yeah. Hank, thank you. Said. Hey, make sure you come down and see Hank. He's a lot of fun. And if you want to tweet Hank before you get here, you need to do that at, South, uh, at uh, Ford Auto Shows, at Ford Auto Shows to be able to tweet Hank. Let's go over to Roxy. <laughs> All right, I'm sitting passenger side. I bet you could see yourself right here in the driver's seat of this brand new Jeep Wrangler top down. Love the color. It says South Florida. You can check out this vehicle here at the South Florida International Auto Show. And you can feel the power of the 4x4 Jeep, of course, at Camp Jeep right outside of the Miami Beach Convention Center. We're joined today by Becky, who is head of brand marketing for Jeep. Becky, talk to me about this brand new Jeep Wrangler. Yeah, our 2012 Jeep Wrangler has an all new powertrain. It has increased horsepower, torque, and fuel efficiency with our 3.6 liter V6 Pentastar engine and an, uh, an available five-speed automatic transmission. That powertrain is shared with the Grand Cherokee. All right, there you go. Now, uh, we, I was talking about Camp Jeep, something that all of you can come out and experience right outside the convention center. Tell us about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. Camp Jeep is our off-road driving course where you can take a ride and experience all that 4x4 capability. We also have ride and drive course where you can take the Grand Cherokee or the Wrangler out for a spin for yourself. Okay, there you go. So you can check out a bunch of different uh, Jeep vehicles outside. All right, talk to me about the importance of the Jeep brand here in South Florida and being here at the South Florida International Auto Show. Yeah, this is a very strong market for us and that's why we're here at the auto show um, with our Jeep vehicles. And uh, this this market represents um, a large part of our sales and sales are up 81% calendar year to date versus last year. Well, that is certainly encouraging news that we all like to hear. Now, I want to hear if you could be one of your own vehicles, which vehicle would you be? This Jeep Wrangler right here. Uh -huh. <laughs> it's in our brand new Dozer color for this year. Oh, okay. It's like a, it's like an orange yellow very South Florida and it's very you Becky thank you so, thank much, you so much for your time All right don't go anywhere we have a lot more coming your way stay with us
Coming up, no one green with bolt and leaf. Which one is right for you? We're celebrating 100 years of Chevrolet. Find out what car is speeding them into the next century. Plus, a first look at the new 2013 model. And we're hitting the streets with one of the hottest exotics on the road today. This is AutoCast from the 41st Annual South Florida International Auto Show. Now, more AutoCast from the South Florida International Auto Show. So we are all trying to do our part to live a little more green these days, including our own chief meteorologist, John Morales. He shows us his new ride. Everybody needs to do their part, you know, and if we all did a little bit, it would sum up to a lot, of course. I chose the Volt because I'm getting, I tell you what, I'm getting 46 miles on battery alone. It was supposed to give me 35, I'm getting 46. Once those 45, 46 miles are up, it switches to the gas engine and I can keep going. It's got a range of like 350 miles. I chose the Volt because I had that flexibility. I love my car. I absolutely love my Chevy Volt. And if you're trying to do something completely different and go completely emission free, you could check out the Leaf here from Nissan. Check this out. It uses this sucker to charge it up. We send our AutoCast cam cameras to get a closer look. This is the all new 2011 Nissan Leaf. 100% electric, no gas, zero emissions vehicle. Plenty of room on the interior. Everything's all recyclable. Here is the oval shaped trunk as well for a deep well, more, more space as well. It goes up to 90 miles an hour, has a range of 100 miles. It's a real car. You get in this car and you hit the gas, it's got instant torque. Doesn't require a drop of gas, never will. We're finding that a lot of people, for example, are, are buying this as a second car. They can't believe how much they're using the car. Whereas it was gonna be the second car, it's becoming the primary car. The idea is plug it in before you go to bed. When you're up in the morning, it's fully charged, ready to go for a commute back and forth to work. I really think this is definitely the kickoff to electric era. When you come down to the show, you're going to find high MPG and hybrid cars and trucks all over. But if you want a quick overview and see multiple models from different manufacturers all at once, you have to check out Greenway. It's here at the southwest corner of the show. When you're here, take a picture with one of the cars and tweet it out. Make sure you use the hashtag SFAuto and we'll retweet you. Roxy's standing by with a big birthday celebration. Take it away, Rox. Hey, Jose, thanks so much. A big birthday celebration indeed. Chevy turns 100 years old. And as we look 100 years into the future, take a look behind me. That is the Chevy Malibu 2013 unveiled right here at the South Florida International Auto Show. And hey, folks, how about a new car? Who doesn't want one of those, right? Well, come right here to Chevy and you could enter to win a brand new car. As a matter of fact, you could enter to win this car, the Sonic LTZ. How about that? And I'm going to walk you over now to one of my favorite vehicles, all right? And there's a sticker that proves that it's 100 years old. Here we go, baby. It's the Corvette. There you see right here, it says 100 years Chevrolet. There you go. Take a look at this black Corvette. I'm going to hop on in here and meet my buddy here, James Bell. How you doing, James? Listen, you're uh, waiting in Darth, Darth Vader's Corvette for you. Darth Vader's Corvette. I like that. A little cynicism here. Absolutely. But let's talk about the 100 years of Chevrolet serving sure. the, com the commuters and the, the consumers. Yeah, well, it's pretty exciting. I mean, it, and the nicest thing about it is that not only this is a 100-year-old division, but it's getting better. What this company has learned is that we are a car company. We're not just a manufacturing company. We're not just a business. We make cool cars, cars that people are really excited about. And look, the show's just started, and this thing's already got fingerprints all over it. Uh, you could say that again, including mine right here. <laughs> cool cars, you could say that again again when it comes to Chevrolet and especially the Corvette that's one of my favorite cars of the Chevy what about you what's your favorite car well gosh where to start I mean I'm really uh, excited about the Malibu that you're talking about earlier because if you kind of look closely it looks like that's a mid-sized car that hung around with the uh, Camaro a little bit and that's the whole thing we're making cars that people are excited about not yeah. just to get a good deal on it but you actually say hey look what I got yeah look what I got look what I'm driving and how about that right all right so this is mine let us know what yours is send me a tweet on Twitter Roxy NBC Miami use hashtag SF auto all right much more coming your way from the auto show. Coming up, we're heading to memory lane. We'll show you the official classic car of this year's show. Then, Jose gets busted daydreaming on the job. Stay tuned. We're chatting with Juan Gonzalez of Mercedes-Benz of Coral Gables. More auto cast from the 41st Annual South Florida International Auto Show is coming right up.
I am a car guy, always have been, and I thought I knew everything about cars until I met one man, and his name, Melman. When you walked into a, uh, a Chevrolet showroom in 1962, of course, first thing they greeted you with is a beautiful color brochure. And, um, you know, it had all the features of the car. And, and people having fun in the car. Yeah, of course, sure. Ooh, you know, Pretty lady. Oh, well, yeah. You know, this is 1960s uh, advertising. It all started out as another quiet South Florida afternoon. Two guys talking car restoration and revving engines. Mel was kind enough to show me three beautiful vests, a 62, a 67, and this amazing convertible 72. And here's where my trouble started. I called them classics. A classic car is one where the factory created the running gear, the chassis, the engine, the transmission, all the hardware. And the coach work or the body work was done by another company. And this Rolls Royce is, I say just an antique, but it is not a classic because the body and the car, everything were built together. So you walked into a Rolls Royce showroom, you pointed to the car, you paid your money, you turned the key and you drove away. Okay, so now it's time to check my knowledge and understanding of this concept. So we headed over to well-known Miami attorney and former U.S. attorney Guy Lewis's private collection for a test. Are you ready? Play along with me, folks. This black 1952 Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn sedan. It's a classic. Yes. Okay, let's move on. Now, what about this blue 1964 Rolls-Royce? It's an antique. Woo! I am on a roll. Okay. Now what about this pale yellow, extremely rare 1953 Mercedes 300 Coupe? You know what, it's so rare that I'm gonna say it's a classic. Okay, oops, my bad. But two out of three ain't bad. So now that we have that out of the way, I also learned a few other things. Let's go back to Mel's Vets. This car was available with power windows. Right. Well, it's clear that this car left the factory without power windows. So if I were to go ahead and decide, hey, I want to add power windows because it's a pretty neat thing, when the car was judged and evaluated, it's, uh, it's not kosher because power windows were not, you know, they were added afterward. When your car is judged and deemed worthy, it gets a signature of approval. You know, there's some imperfections right here that it's a fiberglass coming through. Those imperfections are things that judges look for and you actually are scored higher because of the imperfections. Now get this, over restoring, not using original parts or correcting inherent flaw designs. If they're judging this car, they will actually walk up to the car with a piece of sandpaper and they'll take the sandpaper and they'll rub it underneath. And if there's no color on the sandpaper, you fail. They want to see color coming they off. They want to see color coming off. Well, that's bad and can actually devalue your investment and hard work. Over restoration, bad. I fell in love with the 72 convertible with a chrome bumper, the original top. This car is stunning. In fact, most of its parts are original, making it a... An original unrestored survivor will be a car that has its original interior, a car that's still wearing its original paint, a car that still has its original glass, its original seats, etc., etc. Well, when you come down to the show, you are going to see this, baby. It is a 1950 Rolls-Royce Silver Dawn drop head coupe. Absolutely gorgeous. It's from Guy's Collection. Folks, you're going to be amazed when you come down here. You will not be disappointed. Uh, we're going to go over to Roxy, who has some other very rare customized rides. Miami Street Rides was a new addition to the South Florida Auto Show last year, and this year it is back. Take a look at this, baby. This is not a regular Mustang. This Mustang has raced around the country. It even has trophies to prove it. Pretty sweet, huh? Let's bring you over to the man that makes it all happen, Tim Schoenheim here from Mustang Specialties over in Pompano Beach. Welcome, welcome, Tim. Glad you're here. Hi. So, Hi. How do you take a vehicle like this out of the shop to a car that will race around the country? There's many modifications that are done to suspension, engine, drivetrain, and this one is actually to an extreme. You couldn't really drive this on the street, but we do have plenty that you can drive on the street. All right. Now, now, this one actually, as Tim said, you cannot drive it on the street, but let me show you one that you can. Here, walk this way. Take a look at this baby. Silver, gorgeous, and it was actually just featured in a magazine, right, Tim? Yes, it was. Just featured in a Muscle Mustangs and Fast Forward and, uh, a couple months ago, and uh, it is a street-driven car. It also runs 950s uh, in the quarter mile. How fast will that thing go from like zero to 60, let's say? 
probably like two or three seconds. Two or three seconds? Man, that's that's pretty yeah, crazy. Yeah. What does it take to, 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 what do you have to add to a vehicle to make it ready to, to race on the streets or rather race on the track? Uh, pretty much everything. You start with a vehicle right off the showroom floor and then you modify suspension, drivetrain, engine, wheels and tires, fuel system. Okay. Pretty much everything go through it to do that. <laughs> All right. Well, if you're interested in taking your Mustang to the next level, Tim's going to be here for the next 10 days. You can check out Mustang Specialties.com. Mustang Specialties.com. All right, Jose, over to you. Thank you, Roxy. Well, who doesn't daydream about beautiful cars like this Ferrari that you will find over in Million Dollar Alley? Well, I had a dream, so I called my friends over at Mercedes Benz of Coral Gables, and they took care of me. They hooked me up. Check it out. I can honestly say it's one of the most beautiful cars I've ever seen. The Mercedes-Benz SLS AMG becomes even more beautiful once you hear the roar of the engine. Sales manager Juan Gonzalez runs me through the stats. Plenty of torque, 563 horsepower. So moving at 3,600 pound chassis is, I mean, all the power is there. It's just a light, light car, phenomenal car. I mean, I just, I get excited just talking about it. Each of these cars are made by hand. The engine is a masterpiece and even wears a plaque with the person's name that assembled that engine. The gold wing doors are a signature element, paying tribute to Mercedes-Benz from years past. Well, there's nothing like it out there right now. Mercedes-Benz back in the day was more about, you know, it was your, your father's car, your mother's car. Now, you know, these cars, AMG, the division is really becoming more of a, uh, you know, everybody wants to, wants to own one. Juan says this is a supercar you can drive every day. In fact, it's even great for quick trips to the supermarket. It's a great daily driver vehicle, and it does have a trunk space. I mean, you're not going to go and buy furniture with it, but obviously you can definitely do your groceries, as you mentioned. So needless to say, I couldn't wait to crawl behind the wheel and take it for a spin. We chose this normally quiet neighborhood around the Coral Gables Country Club golf course for my test drive. Folks, the rumble of the engine is unforgettable, as is that exhaust note. The SLS is a dream come true, and I can honestly say it's been one of my most favorite test drives to date. Again, special thanks to Mercedes-Benz of Coral Gables for trusting me behind the wheel of this monster. It was a great experience. Now, when you visit the auto show, you won't be disappointed by the number of exotics that you're going to find. You must see the beautiful new 911 Carrera making its South Florida auto show debut. Prices start at just over 82 k and tops out at about $180,000. You'll find it in Million Dollar Alley along with this Ferrari 458 Spider, one of my personal favorites in the styling department. You should also check out the Lexus LFA. They're taking on the big boys with this one, and they have nothing to be ashamed of as far as performance goes. This one starts at about $375,000 and can be painted in just about any color when you custom order yours today. You also can't go wrong with the all-new BMW 6 Series available as a hardtop or convertible. Same deal with the Audi R8. Iron Man drove this car so you can't beat that. And if you're not looking to spend six figures, you can own one of the fastest production cars in the world, the Nissan GTR. It'll set you back about $90,000. Okay, so Rox, you asked everybody earlier, what car would you be if you were a car? You've seen the show, you've seen everything that's going on, what would you pick? Oh man, the show car for sure, that Mustang Boss, a 302, it is beautiful. And come on, 440 horses under that it, baby? It's amazing. You know what? And I'm going to have to pick the Cadillac CTS. Oh, that's very new. V-convert, uh, coupe. V-coupe. It CTS has to be coupe. the coupe, absolutely. 556 horsepower. Oh, so okay, it's amazing. So you win. <laughs> it's incredible. Hey, if you're going to come down to the show, make sure you tweet us and use the hashtag SF Auto. SF Auto. That's right. Jose NBC Miami, Roxy NBC Miami. We'll see you later. Bye, everyone. Good night.